Good morning, good afternoon. Greetings, Phillips community, faculty and staff, students, administrators. I am grateful to be here with you on this first day of a full week to bring you a word from the Lord, we hope. Um, I'm grateful for this opportunity, always grateful to be asked and to see wonderful faces that bring back good memories. Thank you um, to those who make this possible, to the people behind the camera and scenes, and thank you, Mary Ann, and also thank you to my husband who's joining us from the office, Reverend Dr. John Carter Thomas. The scripture has already been read from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, verses 1 through 7, which will be our text today. Every family member has one. Every family. And mine, it's my uncle. We love him. He wanders off. He returns. He is the lost sheep, prodigal son in so many ways. But you know what? Whenever I talk to my grandmother on Sunday afternoons, as is our tradition, she tells me in details about the delicious meal she prepares for her and my grandfather. But she also, she cooks for my uncle. When I ask her why she keeps cooking for him, the one who doesn't always say thank you, the one who wanders off and stops by when it's convenient to consume her resources. She's generous and way too lavish. She tells me it's because he's hers. She said he will always be welcomed at her table. As long as God keeps blessing her to feed him, she will feed what his siblings sometimes call the black sheep. And I wonder today if there are room at our tables for the black sheep. Grandma is continuously showing me that what it means to follow Jesus is that there always has to be room. Room to welcome those who don't always come with manners, maturity, and right motives. Whenever one of our family members gets on grandma for spending her resources, searching for her son and caring too much and welcoming him too many times to the table. She doesn't get mad. But she always is actually more concerned with the rest of them, with those who are making accusations. For my grandmother models that it's those who are making accusations that should know better. And so today, today, my brothers and sisters, I want to reframe the metaphor of the black sheep, the English idiom that we use to describe he or she who wanders off. I hope to open our minds to a greater understanding and awareness of what is our role and who are the black sheep. In today's text, we have Pharisees and scribes who are always grumbling about something. They are unnerved with Jesus again, and not even just unnerved. They are disgusted with Jesus, the one who some call rabbi, the one who's attempting to teach their law, but who doesn't side with them. The Jesus who deviates, the one who doesn't follow protocol, who's always stepping beyond boundaries, who's moving up and down the ladder, messing up their social hierarchy. He's with the scandalous ones, the ones who charge exorbitant amount of interest, who don't adhere to the law, those who are not righteous. Doesn't he know the rules and rituals why isn't he listening to the ones who are grumbling and gossiping? He's getting such reputation of the one who welcomes sinners and eats with them. Jesus 
is always rearranging the social order. Always calling us to a different order. And he's simply telling them, and not just telling them, he's modeling for them the right thing. Not so much just the right thing to do, but he's modeling what the kingdom, what the kingdom of God is supposed to look like that it confuses the typical social order. In discussions and sermons, we often focus on the one, right? It's about the one. It's not about the 99. It's about the one who wanders, the one who leaves the group, the one in need of repentance. Yes. But today, as I think and as I ask us to sit with the state of our nation today and in the week ahead, as you have classes and discussions about all of the madness, the brokenness in this world. As the Pharisees and scribes call attention to, as they accuse Jesus of eating with sinners, of breaking rules and rituals, of not being in their homes, in their churches, at their rallies, at their cultic performances of religiosity, as they question Jesus, I want to use this text and lift up this text to remind us the good news that Jesus has broken the rules of the righteous and the expectations of the establishment. A black sheep is one who has a recessive gene that shows up that results in a blackish coloring as opposed to the white norm that we know of sheep. For sheeps in the for in the world of sheeps and in the sheep market, black sheeps are less valuable, less desirable. Part of it is that their wool is not of the same quality of white sheep. Of white sheep, they the wool cannot be dyed, and so it's seen as less valuable overall in the market. Black sheep are from this we often get um, the idiom of black sheep. Um, which has to do with an individual who has certain characteristics and makes certain choices that make the group from which the black sheep separates to appear as undesirable. The black sheep is the one who is threatening the order, who is pushing back on the group and making often the group uncomfortable. Um, it often has to do with the group's identity being threatened and questioned. And I wanna to present to us today and kind of flip this and say that the black sheep identity is often misunderstood by dominant culture. It's not that something is wrong with the black sheep. It's not that something is wrong with the 99. I wanna propose that the black sheep, as in my family and many of our families is not is not the lost one, but the black sheep has been with Jesus. The black sheep is not the wanderer, not the one in need of repentance, but the black sheep is often in solidarity with the group of 99. The black sheep is the one who realizes life and life abundantly is in staying with Jesus and sticking together because that is the only way to keep us safe from the wolves. The lost sheep, the lost sheep in today's context is the wanderer, is the one who is in search of greener pastures. So while we have groups, why we have crowds of black sheep who are not understood by the dominant culture. We have white sheep and wanderers who want to go away. And this may not always be a physical desertion, my brothers and sisters. Sometimes it's a spiritual, a political, a theological desertion from the group. The one who leaves to find greener pastures. The one who leaves because he or she doesn't want to work with others. The one who leaves to find places where there isn't talk of racism and white supremacy. Do you hear me? The one who leaves to find pastures where they will not be challenged to listen to the views of those with whom they disagree. To find a place where their status and connections can exempt them from doing the hard soul work that's required 
in group right now. To find a place where nobody expects them to take a stance, where there can be quick fixes for racial reconciliation without racial, racial righteousness. He leaves to find white norms without black sheep who stop bleeding about their lives mattering. To leave to find pastures where the changeable signs in front of churches are not controversial and the people inside, the people inside declare that all lives matter. You know, the lost ones. For those who do not want to sit and worship, those who do not want to stand and protest are not where Jesus is abiding. For like the scribes and Pharisees who are fraught with accusations, they are confused about Jesus not inviting them. They are confused about Jesus not choosing to sit at their table. That Jesus has moved on to be with those who are curious about him, who are open to hear from him, and who are willing to downsize their egos in order to make space for him. So what does this mean? What does this mean for us? It means that the church is supposed to be a place for the black sheep, for the masses, for the, the, those who are deviants, but at times it struggles to live into its call and finds itself being more of a home for the white norm instead of a refuge for the black sheep. And that's why Jose Marquez has been said to coin the term, the black sheep effect. The black sheep effect, the black sheep effect in social psychology is a phenomenon in which someone who is socially undesirable is less liked by the group that he or she belongs to than by a group that is outside of the social group. So what I'm saying is that the person who is the deviant, the black sheep, is less likable than those who belong to the outside groups. And so it's a, it's a sense of being harsher with those who are supposed to belong to the group of the black sheep, to those who have pledged allegiance to the same values and principles of the black sheep. When that person wanders off, we have what we call the black sheep effect. It's the group, the black sheep begin to figure out, try to figure out What's wrong? What's wrong with him? What's wrong with her? What's wrong with them? Why, why are you leaving the group? And in this case, this group has been with Jesus. And I want to confess today and what I'm wrestling with as I work through this sermon, as I labored over the sermon and bring it before you today is that I confess that I have been more affected by the black sheep effect as of lately. I have a harsher view of those who deviate from justice, who act unjustly, who despise mercy, and who walk haughtily. I, too, am exhausted, and people who look like me are exhausted of trying to follow behind those who get up from the table, the church, and the council meetings, who go after folks who don't want to be there. We're exhausted trying to educate and explain ourselves to folks who want to leave. And Jesus, our Jesus, is always rescuing the one who wants to go off. The one who may not want to stay in the group and push back against the principalities of power and powers of darkness. The one who wants to wander off. Do you hear? Do you suffer from the black sheep effect? Because I'm more disgusted and angered by those who claim to follow Jesus and yet pledge allegiance to racism, white supremacy, and silence. I am more infuriated by those who claim allegiance to Jesus, yet whose hearts and hands are dirty by death dealing. Those who focus on folks eating with sinners while they ignore that there are people starving for righteousness. Those who call out the tax collectors while they're benefiting from tax breaks. 
Those who see nothing wrong with kneeling on the neck of another human being, but are so grateful that Jesus will pick them up and put him, put them around his neck with such compassion. And I believe there's joy. I don't always feel it, but I believe there is joy over the renouncing and eradicating of white supremacy. And yet, I'm hanging with the 99. I'm hanging with the black sheep because what has been twisted and what we have seen this turned into is a practice of white Jesus black sheep. And preaching and practice of following a white Jesus who only goes after what we think is the black sheep in order to ask him or her to repent of their identity and to assimilate into a gospel of fake news. Those with white savior complexes who try to return black sheep to the fold, I am tired of it. And I want us to think about how this is a gospel. This is a Jesus who is about the black sheep who are curious enough to sit with Jesus, to reconsider their ways, re-examine their righteousness, and recommit to justice. And I, I wonder if in your spaces, as well as mine, if there are changes happening, changes brooding, if times are turning, if justice is about to turn. If there is changes to our liturgical diversity, if we have new commitments to justice, to institutional conversion, if there are people who do not want to participate, then they should leave. I'm serious. They should leave. Perhaps those with connections we think we can't leave, live without may need to leave. Perhaps funders may need to leave. Perhaps people who don't want to be amongst the black sheep may need to go. And I'm okay with that because you know what? It's my hope and belief that Jesus is good and gracious enough to go after that. That Jesus will send someone to go after him, but it will not be me. And it should not be people who look like me at this time because Jesus is more gracious than us all. And I'm so glad that Jesus goes after those who are lost to justice. And I'm grateful that Jesus came after me. Perplexed by the paradoxes when I was taken aback by truth tellers I think about, you know, I was thinking about part of the black sheep effect is we have to be careful of painting the lost in such a picture because we didn't always have revelations of justice. I don't know about you, but I I didn't always embrace the justice of Jesus. I, I, I too lived in trapped in mindsets of white supremacy. I mean, I think about just a couple of decades ago, and this is no knock on that place, but just a couple of decades ago, I was spending more time in Tulsa at 777 South Lewis Avenue than I was at 901 North Mingo. Do you hear me? I was spending more time at ORU than PTS. I lived in a place where my phobias were real of out groups and my over-dependence on voices of in-groups. And I am so glad that Jesus had space for me when I was curious, sent people to share recommended readings with me when I was skeptical, and was gracious with my orthodoxy when it was not. Someone has to have time for lost sheep, for those lost and devoured by the wolves of white supremacy. Someone has to have time. And I'm so glad for you, for leaders, for doctor of ministry students who will do the hard and holy work of following Jesus, of seeing the 99, of knowing the 99, and knowing Jesus has been with the black sheep all along eating, dining, dancing, protesting, and shouting back at the policing powers, the empire. I am so glad that you are being educated in a place where you are wrestling with the hard things 
and thinking through justice in ways that will help you and I be better vessels of Jesus's compassion. And I'm, I'm grateful to know a Jesus who gets the struggle, a Jesus who was the black sheep, a Jesus who was the ultimate social deviant who removed the boundaries of in-groups and out-groups. It's time to sit with the black sheep, church. It's time to learn from black sheep. It's time to know that we have a just Jesus who is always found in the crowds of black sheep. And if we want to know this Jesus, this just Jesus as a liberator, then we have to spend time with black sheep. We have to spend time with those who have been set free during times of Juneteenth, from those who've been set free from prison, from those who've been set free from hatred that can kill. We have to spend time with black sheep if we want to understand Jesus as savior, as the salvific one. We must spend time with black sheep who know him as Jesus and not just white sheep who know him as the Christ. We have to spend time with Jesus if we want to understand Jesus as the sufferer. We gotta spend time with the one who was led like a lamb to the slaughter. It's critical to spend time with people who suffered and watched their sons and daughters slaughtered. If we wanna know Jesus as the resurrected one, we have to spend time with black sheep who still believe and the one who conquers sin and death, who was willing to resurrect our hope and our compassion for those who don't often show they deserve. Amen.